My name's Jason Newland and this is Let Me Bore You to Sleep. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. And uh, as I speak to you right now, I'm watching the BBC News election special and in this very moment I do believe the Conservative Party have won the general election it's 5.05 so the voting's not all come in you know the results are not all come in but they have to win a certain amount and the Conservatives have got 327 I think they need 326 to actually win. So Conservatives win majority, that's the breaking news. They've gone past it. (laughs) Oh dear. So there you go. Um, And it's just going up. At the moment the score is Conservatives 328. Labour 196, SNP 45, Liberal Liberal Democrats 8. And uh, I didn't actually get a chance to vote. Well, Conservatives are now 329. So basically what this means is they're forecast that the Conservatives are going to have a a lot more coming in as well which means whenever they put something forward to the the government you know to vote on they're going to win because they've got such a majority that they're, they're going to pretty much get everything through that they want which will make it a little bit easier because it's been I've been watching the debates and everything for the last couple of years and recently, especially this year vote after vote in the House of Commons and just coming up you know, everyone voting again it's just, it wasn't there was no clear winner they were sort of the government were being defeated continuously because they didn't have any kind of leeway. Now they've got a huge amount, 197 to 330. So that's what's that's 133 more MPs than Conservatives than Labour. That's a slight majority, isn't it? Slight. So anyway, oh, now the Conservatives are 332. It's it's weird. I'm not going to spend the time talking about politics because I know that's not everybody's favourite subject. Right now it's not mine either. It's... I was even going to... I was going to talk about my... I was going to talk I was <sighs> about my election ritual that I kind of do where I get a pizza from but not if I, I get one locally if I can but I get them delivered these days because I don't live near anywhere and uh, I did the same today, got a pizza this morning, well, last night. I've just been eating it all night because pizzas are nice cold as well. I, at least I think so. And when the pizza person arrived, I didn't have enough money. I didn't have enough cash. So I had to raid my piggy bank and give him lots of ten pences and five pences and stuff. Which was a little bit embarrassing, but I got through it. 
I survived. I got through it. And all night it's been raining. Which I think is the correct weather for this uh, particular election. It's almost like the planet's trying to wash away the dirt of the Conservative Party. But it can't. Just, just... <laughs> but they're in. They're in charge of everything. Bless them. So... <sighs> I do find humans weird. I know people have been completely messed around by this government. Really, really, you know, mistreated. Yeah, they'll still do anything but avoid voting Labour. They won't vote Labour. So it reminds me a little bit, what's that, um, that condition that people have? Uh, that are taken hostage and then they start to kind of be uh, loyal to their hostage taker there's a, a syndrome isn't there that's, I think that's what we've got in this country we've got some kind of weird syndrome about the conservatives and the people that have just clearly don't like us <laughs> and are not interested in our well being don't care about the poor or the ill or the sick yet the poor and the ill and the sick are still voting for them. So it's just... Uh, seems a bit strange. Never mind. But I couldn't vote because I couldn't be bothered. <laughs> no, I had, I had my chair... had my chair um, being collected today. Or yesterday, rather. Didn't know when they were coming. They put on their text, or whatever, they're going to be here between 8 in the morning and 8 at night. Yay. Uh, so, I just stayed up. I went to bed, stayed up. You know, I kind of just drifted through the day, waited for them. Eventually, they did contact me and said, oh, we'll be there within an hour. I said, okay. In the meantime, yesterday or the day before, I had been wrapping the chair up because I was told by a lady on the phone that they won't take it unless it's wrapped, which was untrue. And I spent £10. Uh, I couldn't get any bubble wrap the day before yesterday because I was waiting for a bus that didn't turn up. So I couldn't get to the shops to do that. So I asked a friend if he had anything that he could help wrap it up with and I said I'll give you the £10 that I was going to spend on the bubble on the packaging so I gave him £10 he said yeah and he turned up with a, a little piece of tarpaulin tor 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 which wasn't big enough to cover the whole thing and didn't help me wrap it but, so that was uh, another pointless uh, waste of money and then Oh, what else? And then... <sighs> so I'm waiting in. And I think... Oh, and another friend knocks on my door and he says, I'll give you a hand to get it outside the front door because they'll be here soon. So he's a man sort of coming in. And I said, yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. So he's outside the front door. They were there within about half an hour, 40 minutes of that time. And there's two of them. One came up. He said, what's all this stuff <laughs> wrapped around it? Because it was carrier bags, tin foil, um, uh, what's it, film? You know that film wrap thing that you, what is it called? Cling film, that's it. And carry bags tied together like rope, plus two bed sheets. So I've really kind of done, I've gone out to do my best to cover it up. 
Hey, so what's all this crap? I was told by the lady on the phone that I had to have it covered, otherwise you wouldn't take it. And he said, nah, that's not true. I need to get this rubbish off. So basically I had to take it off. Um, and then he said, what's wrong with it then? I said, well, the back of the chair is just loose, it's broken. And he starts moving it and it's very loose. He said, well, it wasn't like this when uh, I delivered it. And he called his friend over and he said, look at this. And the old bloke said, it wasn't like this when we delivered it. And I said, are you calling me a liar? I said, no, 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 I just... And I think one of them said, well, it's your money. So I don't know what he meant by that. Is it, I'm going to get charged for it anyway? I don't know. Or I did pay for the delivery. I paid for the collection as well. So that was £19 each. So I'm £40 down there. £10 down by giving my friend money for nothing. So that was £50. Um, plus two whole days lost, waiting around, and yeah, kind of quite an inconvenience, really. Um, and as I said to him, look, I realise I might be a bit fat, but I'm not fat enough and heavy enough to break a brand new chair. You know, this, this is a brand new chair. I couldn't break something like that. I'm not that, I'm not heavy, you know what I mean? I'm not, if I was like 40 stone, maybe, that could have done it, but I'm not. And they said, oh, don't, don't worry, don't worry. And I said, the reason why it's loose now, and it wasn't loose when you delivered it, is because it was packaged very tightly. If it was packaged the same way now, as it was when you delivered it, you wouldn't be able to move the back of the chair because it was solidly packed with cardboard and cellophane and stuff. I like trying to explain the obvious to someone that ain't gonna hear it. It's just, uh... So they took it. They said, oh, it's, this is gonna go in the bin. Really? You would chuck a whole chair out because the back, the two bits of wood that connect the back to the chair are broken. Instead of replacing those bits, you ch chuck away a whole chair, costing, it cost me 270, it should have been about 440 or 470 or something like that. That seems a bit, a bit weird, doesn't it? Why would you chuck away a perfectly, all the other bits are good. Yeah. Uh, it's like chucking away a television because a plug, a plug blows a socket or whatever. Blows a socket, what's those things in plugs that I never touch? Oh, my chair. So I'm back sitting on my squeaky chair. Well, I was yesterday as well, but. And I've got the other chair, which is the other side of the room. I'll probably get rid of that, put that in back into the. into the what's name, the shed. So by the time they got here, I was so tired. I just went back to bed and I slept till about eight o'clock or something in the evening. And I was up till about, I don't know, half twelve this morning and then I went back to bed again and got up about four. And now it's 19 minutes past five. Because I've got an appointment today with a psychologist and uh, he's Mr. What's his name? 
You know what I'd love, what I'd really love more than anything, is for Boris Johnson to lose his seat. That would be, I would pay money for that to happen. That would be so beautiful. So let's say the Conservatives won, but then he lost his seat in whatever constituency he's in. I don't know what he represents. Can you imagine how wonderful that would be? Because, I don't know, but I guess that if you... If you don't win your seat, then you lose your... You lose, yeah, but you can't be Prime Minister if you're not a Prime... If you're not... Uh, Minister, yeah, makes sense. You have to be a minister in order to be a prime minister. Yeah, Boris. It's not even his real name. Honestly, it's not. It's it's his middle name. His first name is so like, I don't know if it's Sebastian or something like that. Joe Wilson or Joe Swinson, the Liberal Democrat leader, she lost her seat. So she was a Democrat leader for about six months. She got loads of publicity. Never heard of her before. And suddenly she was on the news constantly. So, if anyone she knows what she's doing correctly and she really she takes the most advantage of this situation because she's popular as a person and she's now known all over the country so she could get onto Dancing on Ice or Strictly Come Dancing or I'm in the jungle get me into the jungle whatever I need money uh, program she could have oh yeah she could she could make absolute fortune she really could so I wish her luck I reckon she she should get us or be a TV presenter or something she's got a lot of um, she's got a nice quite nice uh, I don't know what the right word is she comes across quite nicely quite friendly and you know I don't know she does I don't care I do care I don't but I do I don't but I do but I don't and by the way if anyone's listening to this and they don't know the results of the election um, there's nothing I'm just, you know, it's unlikely I don't think anyone's going to be you might do you might you might be you know, you might be listening to this, you might be thinking, I'm going to listen to Jason's relaxing voice. Because at least that's better than watching the election on television. I need to get away from anything political. And you listen, <laughs> and you listen to me going on about the election. <laughs> oh dear. I won't go on about it. I will stop talking about it right now. So you had 19 minutes of me. I didn't really talk about the... I wasn't really... Well, I didn't really talk... Oh, not really talk about it. Just... I didn't give my political opinions. I just... I just want a political part. I just want the government... Just to be nice. You know, not be nice and kind to the people whose government it is because I look around the world and I look on the news and it is it's all based upon news stories so I don't know how true it all is but some of the other countries are really having a difficult time with their governments you know like Hong Kong uh 
I've lost count of the amount of places like there's Spain, isn't there? There's the, the part of Spain that wants to be um, whatever. Um, what do they call it? Li not a liberal art, you know, they want to kind of have their own. Uh, fuck. I don't understand it all, but there's so many people in the streets rioting and stuff. Um, I think I'm lucky to live in a country that doesn't have that because I don't know I think that one of the benefits of getting old really is you get to see stuff happen through time you get to see the more of the long term results for something that seemed like a really good thing, you see the long term results of it. You know, when a, a country overthrows their government and they're all in the street dancing and partying. I think that happened, didn't it happen in, in Egypt? I think. And uh, uh, Syria, possibly? I don't know. That happened in a, a few countries. And they were dancing in the streets and then because they'd overthrown the government and everything and then it it, uh, it didn't turn out good and yeah I don't I don't want that I don't want that for anyone but I don't want it for my country that scares that scares me that does Ooh. something about mob rule you know I think there's a uh, when you get a group of people together it's the whole you know saying it's uh, you're only as strong as your strongest link no you're only as strong as your weakest link I think it's also you're only as intelligent as your least intelligent person so that group I think that's where the uh, some of these extreme white right wingers go wrong because they Maybe the people at the top are like really intelligent, but they get people that <laughs> perhaps really aren't. So there's they're weak. They have got that weak link, maybe, or left left wing extremism, whichever way. Any kind of extremism. I don't like extremities. Don't like it too whole, too hot, too. Let me say too hold. Too hold or too cot. I like it just right. So yeah, uh, luckily, I don't have to have conversations with people about politics. Because it's, you can't win a conversation. You can't win an argument because people get emotional about it. And emotion just seems to emotion always wins over logic unfortunately although not necessarily a bad thing because hypnosis is about emotion you know we're also using logic but when that emotion is there you know when someone say someone wants to stop smoking Logically, you know, should logically, you know, blah blah, you know, all the same old cliches. But then that emotion comes in, and like, oh wait a minute, it might come a time when my my little boy is, I'm seeing my little boy for the, for the last time, and my little girl gets to watch me being ill. And, What's going to happen to them? Oh, you know, and the emotion kicks in, and the person stops smoking immediately because the emotion was so strong that even though the logic was there, the logic wasn't enough. But once the emotion kicks in, 
and it kind of mingles with the logic. Basically, they're on the same side. Once the two armies are on the same side, they're no longer fighting. And they become stronger. Stronger together than apart. My man used to say, she had a rhyme for that. Remember, remember Jason, stronger together than apart. But please, don't fart. I was trying to think how I was going to get the word fart in there. As soon as I heard, as soon as I heard myself say the word apart, I thought I've got to use the word fart. But it didn't quite work. I didn't. Yeah. I was hoping it would be like really clever, cleverly done and fit together like a really, almost like a, like a perfect toasted sandwich. You know, all, all the different <laughs> various innards. You can't call them toppings, can you? So they're kind of innards. Andre. What are you doing, mate? Andre's doing something. He's, he's, he's trying to get my attention. Andre. Hey. Come here. What are you doing? Are you alright? I picked him up earlier. I thought he wanted something. And I sat down on my chair and I just had him was stroking his head like I am now actually I didn't realise he fell asleep I stopped stroking his head and he fell asleep and he was just laying there and then I start, I think I had a drink so I moved my hand and I started stroking his head again and it woke him up And the thing about him is he rarely climbs on me to go to sleep. He climbs on me to fight or just to kind of say hello and give me a kiss or whatever, you know, a little sniff. But he really, he really, he doesn't climb on me to go to sleep. That's something that kind of happens without him meaning it to. Because... There are times during the, the day or night or whatever that he's never more than maybe five seconds away from being asleep. So if I pick him up at the right time, he's completely gone. He just... So I had a neighbour knock on my door yesterday. So I picked Andre up. I had him in my arms and this neighbour's talking. And Andre did something that he's never I've never seen him do before. He didn't just fall asleep, but he had his tongue sticking out, which is a sign that he's really happy and content. So like really And it wasn't hot because it's cold outside. You know, in the hallway, so sort of, it wasn't that he was all hot and he was trying to get himself cooled down. Because when he does that he pants. It was just like with a little tongue out. And he was just enjoying himself, just being there. Just, it's all, almost like he forgot that he was in my arms. Because he doesn't normally like to do that. He likes to, he prefers it when he can get onto my bed when I'm not there. Hello. Give your daddy kisses. <laughs> You realise, Andre, there's people listening here, right now, that think that you're beautiful. That they like you more than they like me. They do. They're, they're your fans. They're your fans. They, 
Okay. Go away then. No, get away from the phone. What are you doing? Now he's gone. So he's not very happy with me at the moment because I've given him food that he doesn't like. He's eating it. Partly. He hasn't eaten all of it. But he doesn't like it. But I couldn't get out today to get him any like of his normal stuff. But I will tomorrow. And with his normal food, when I feed it to him, he just he gobbles it up, loves it, absolutely loves it. And it comes in, I think, four different flavours. So he doesn't have the same one every day. That was a boring sentence, wasn't it? <laughs> Can you imagine being at a party or at a wedding and you end up with me talking to you? about my ferret and the food and how the food ran out and I gave him some cheap food that I'd had in, you know, as a backup but I wasn't able to go and get any new food that he likes to eat because I was having my chair collected because the chair was broken and when the people that collected the chair delivered, came to collect it they said, oh, it wasn't broken when we delivered it almost kind of blaming me when I didn't do anything and then intermittently talking about the uh, election results you'd have to get out of that party wouldn't you you'd have to eat. I think you'd have to leave you'd have to leave the wedding reception even if you were the groom you know even if you had just got married you'd have to leave. Oh, I've got to get out of here Even worse, imagine if it was before the wedding started. You'd be running away saying, sorry, my, I love you, but I do want to marry you, but I can't stay in this building with him, with that Jason. He's boring, so boring. He keeps talking about cat food that he gives to his ferret that's, that's just... I can't take it anymore. So, yeah, that's... Uh, I think I've been very lucky. I didn't realise at the time, but I've been. I haven't. I haven't been to lots of parties, but unfortunately, I spent time with a lot of drunk people when I worked in clubs and stuff. And drunk people are can be amongst the most boring people you ever meet. And um, sometimes they can be most fun, but they can be incredibly boring. It's they're fun when you're drunk. If you're gonna, if you're gonna. Sp I always find if I'm gonna spend time with drunk people, I need to be drunk with them. Otherwise, it's just does it doesn't work. It's just such a different level of, um, yeah, just uh, nah. So when I was a DJ, I used to have a, some sometimes have men come up to me and just talk. And I didn't want to talk to men. I wanted to talk to women. I didn't mind talking to the men. They wanted the song played cool. But they wouldn't know where the toilets were. Great. But I didn't want to have a conversation with them about life <laughs> and uh, about their job and what they thought of their boss. I didn't, I didn't really care. And I still don't, funny enough. But there's, you know, there's. I'd be thinking, oh, because it made it interesting. Because I always find, and this, it's just my experience. I always found that um, women just were more fun at the disco. But I think it's maybe it's just because it's more fun for the women. Because you know, I'm one of those men at disco that would be standing at the back holding a pint of lager, watching people dance and not interacting at all. And there is a lot of that at discos. 
when this was at a nightclub, but it was, it was a disco. I was the DJ, and when I was forty. If I ever, if I ever opened a nightclub, it would be for women only. It would be a women's only nightclub with. With lots of maybe male servers, just you know, it'd be, it'd be like a hen night. In fact, I'd call it the hen night, and it'd be there, or I think I don't know if it's called in other countries the bridal party or whatever. So it would just be a lot of fun for the women to have, and because I thought originally I thought I oh, get a strip club. You know, and have lots of, but then if you buy it, if, if you're at this one, I was younger, there's no point doing that because the, the place is just full of men. So, and I just think it'd be more fun to have a, a, a big club full of women just enjoying themselves. So, yeah, I think I was born, I think I've got. I think I was kind of kind of born a woman in a in a way. Always always managed to. I always got on better with women than with men. Always. So I'm not like one of those like uh, macho men. You know, what needing to be tough and the and I've got no interest in the things that. Men seem to be interested in. I know it's a, it's a generalisation, but it's also kind of true. Also, you know, when I was a kid, no interest in football. I was interested in girls, but they weren't interested in me. So I kind of couldn't even interact in that particular activity. I had girls as friends, but it wasn't really until I left school, because um, I was mainly around men most of my adult life in my twenties. Mainly, it's only when I was doing security at a nurse's home like a, a ner what, nurses training to be nurses then suddenly all these women were there and they were giving me attention and I realised that I'd gotten really well with women I didn't kind of know it until then and I was 26 no 25 when I was at Butlins I also got on quite well I realised I was oh this is weird almost like it could be like a girlfriend kind of relationship or I just immediately went into the friend zone and then when I was in my 30s I did a college course in massage and it was all women and I was basically a woman as far as they were concerned they just treated me as one of their own I know I'm talking like they're a different species but um, men and women are a different species basically I know we're humans but they're very different um, it's, ob it's so obvious it's just ridiculous isn't it? I don't, you know, not just physically but we're different although some people aren't <laughs> I love that like, none of this makes sense oh so labour uh. anyway I actually went to a hen night. I was invited to a hen night, which is what we're not supposed to, men are not supposed to go to. But the, the person that was hosting the hen night for this, one of the ladies on the course, this was a few years after the course finished. She, um, she said, could you turn up and 
wear your suit and be on the door. Like the, it's the door of the house, basically, and let people in. So I did that. And then, then they said, I didn't realise I was going to be invited in. I was just doing that. Then I said, I'll go home. I'll, I'll happily do that for a couple of hours and I'll, then I'll head off. They said, no, come in. You're the stripper. And I said, okay. Hoping that they were joking. And they were. Well, they weren't. I stripped off and then then they were. Then they decided no. Which I don't know how to feel about that, but they changed their minds. They said, uh, it's nice that you brought your suit with you, but you could have brought your willy. <laughs> well, that's a bit rude. So, oh, look. 19,209. So, yeah, I... I, uh... That was quite interesting. And then I was at university with mainly all women again. It was 80% women on the course. So I made all these new female friends. And lost contact with everybody now, pretty much. Yeah, I don't. I've. That's one of the things that is missing from not working. Is having the I suppose the contact with people, including those that I don't particularly want to be con have contact with, but. There's a degree of, yeah. Because in my last job, when I was in a call center back in 2014 or whatever it was, the I started to, or well, had some new friends that I made, and I got on really well with them, and I was spending, you know, eight hours a day with them, and had a laugh and everything. And then there was one lady that I was starting to kind of get to know a little bit. Now, I wasn't far from maybe asking her out or, you know, seeing if she wants to do something. And then it, nothing happened, but I got on quite well with a fair few of the women and the men that worked there. But there was one girl, well, a woman, that did not like me. And I really liked her. I kind of... And the more she didn't like me, the more I liked her. I wanted her to like me. Which is weird because I don't know why. And she used to be like, why mate, to me? I'm like, yeah, yeah. And, I, and there was no conversation. I knew that she could converse because she was a salesperson. She was, so she was very good at it. So she, she spent all day talking to people and so I knew she could but she said she, she literally chose not to she chose not to interact with me and I didn't know why I didn't know why why the same thing happened with this uh, this lady that worked in a in a uh, what was it a sandwich place that I used to frequent when I first moved here, or well, for quite a few years, and I just fell in love with her. And she had zero interest in me, to the point where sometimes I'd say hello to her, and she'd ignore me. <laughs> she'd actually ignore me. And what she'd do sometimes, she'd see me come in, And she'd get someone else to serve me. 
Like, what have I done? I just, you know, I hadn't done anything. I, I think I had like two conversations with her the whole time over sort of eight years or seven years. I just wanted to love her. <laughs> but it didn't quite work out that way. I seem to like that in the past. I don't anymore. I don't want to do that anymore. But in the past, I've, I've fallen in love with people that just don't know it no idea that I like them and quite often I'm not myself with them because I don't get to know them which is doesn't really work does it you got to be you got to be yourself there's no point pretending to be something you're not but it was just like wow when I first started working at church it was, there was this young lady Natalie her name was and I just fell in love with her like oh I fell in love with the back of her neck didn't like the rest of her just the back of her neck so we went out dating and I used to get her to walk backwards and stuff but no, I'm joking. <laughs> I drew a little face on her neck. No, um, she was lovely. I really, I don't know what it was about her, but I just, I just melted every time I saw her. And, and she almost didn't know that I existed, and I, I wasn't able to really talk to her. And then, um, <laughs> I'm not sure how many people she dated in that office while I was working there. At least two, maybe three. So, yeah. Didn't, um, didn't really go anywhere. Which is weird, but, well, I had this, because I'd been a DJ previous to that, and I'd had a lot of, I was quite confident in myself with the opposite sex. I, I felt just confident uh, through experience and just, yeah, I felt confident. And that confidence just dwindled. <laughs> it's like, oh, where's it? My mojo, I lost my mojo. And I got it back a little bit in about 2000, between 2005, 2007. And then I lost it again. And I've had a little, little bit of resurges, one recently and one a couple of years back. But it was nice having my mojo constantly you know all year round every year for well, really I suppose between 2005 no 1995 and 2001 that was kind of when I was my mojo was fairly active, not all the time, but pretty good. So 95 to 2001. So I kind of had six years of, of you know, a degree of confidence. I say confidence, not competence. Confidence. Confidence. Confide. The word confide. Is it confidence? Someone who's your confident. Yeah. Weird words. 
Weirdy, 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 weirdy. Wow. I can't believe the election results. It's just... It's... Anyway, it's still at, it's still happening. It's still acting now. So hopefully, I'm going to go to sleep for a few hours, and then I'm going to get up and do what I need to do. I need to get Andre some food, but hopefully. Try and uh, I might just not watch any television for a while and not watch the news for maybe a year. <laughs> just, just put it. It's a, uh, so Conservatives have got three hundred and fifty-seven seats. Labour got two hundred and two. SNP have got forty-eight. Liberal Democrats have got ten. DUP have got I can't see because my my mute button on my tele my phone my um TV is blocking it. So now Conservatives have got three hundred and thirty seven. No. No, that's in England, sorry. It's in England. So three hundred and fifty what have they got? Three hundred and fifty odd. I do wonder if it's the weather because the poorest part of the population perhaps can't afford to drive can't afford to like, run a car which means getting to the uh, polling station to vote would have meant getting absolutely soaked wet <laughs> so maybe you know if this had been during the summer or the spring it might have been a different result but I don't think it would have been that different and maybe we get the political party we deserve oh. Oh. Mm. oh dear I need a holiday. It's so nice to just go on a holiday, you know. Go away. But somewhere where I can take Andre with me. I think the ideal solution, and I imagine a lot of people would possibly love this idea, is to be able to go away on holiday, but take our home with us. You know, the home, your garden, everything, all with you. To perhaps another part of the country somewhere nice and sunny maybe somewhere near a beach if you don't live near a beach maybe to another country you know whatever you whatever you like you know, we've all got our own um, preferences don't we but to have your just have your home and wherever you go you know you have a fridge and a freezer full of food ready you know of all the stuff that you like to eat. And you'll have a tap that's still connected to your own town so that the water is safe to drink or safe for you to drink. Because it's all about being used to the water, isn't it? You know, people say, oh, if you go to Spain or Italy or whatever country, don't drink the water. But they don't say that to the people who live there because they're used to the water. I guess 
it's just, you know, we'd be used to it if we lived there. I've never drunk water in another country. I don't think I have. I, when I went to Spain, I had bottled water and Coke. I'd love to go to Spain. I'd love just to do that again, just to go for the afternoon. It was a nice little, it was a, there was a nice two day journey, because I went early in the morning, I went, no, I went, I left early in the morning to get to the airport in the afternoon, and the flight wasn't until the following morning. I don't know if it was uh, delayed or something, I can't remember. And then, so I'm in the, the airport all afternoon and all night. I loved it. Absolutely loved it. Plenty of food to eat, drink, toilets, uh, shops to buy stuff. I, I read about three Woody Allen books while I was there. Great, great day out and night warm enough, yeah, everything. A little bit uncomfortable when it came to sleeping, but, you know, I wasn't that bothered. I was very young at the time, so I didn't care. Um, now I need a double bed in a house with a ferret. You know, I'm very, uh, certain needs now that I have. And, and um, You know the best thing about Boris Johnson winning his seat is he's standing there and all the other candidates that are up for election, you know, that have gone against him in his constituency are all dressed in ridiculous outfits. Like dressed up as a monk one's dressed up as a monkey, I think, one's dressed up as looks like Darth Vader. It's a lot, lots of really silly, comical um, people have gone against him. I haven't seen in any of the other constituents apart from with his. No, actually, you know, Jeremy Corbyn, he's got someone with a big hat on. What on earth? I don't know what that is, a huge hat. So I like that. These people are really important. That picture is going to have... What are you going to focus on? You're going to focus on the politician or the person with a chicken on their head. Anyway. Um, I forget what I was saying. So I'll, I'll get on and do what I need to do today, and I'll go on holiday, yeah, that's it. Yeah, it'd be nice. nice to do that because actually I was there all night in the airport and then the the plane turned up and we left at about I don't know 8 in the morning maybe 9 maybe 10 I don't know maybe yeah probably fairly early maybe about 8-ish it's hard to know this is back in 1988 or was it 89 one of them I was 18 anyway and went over there. And I remember getting into the airport in Malaga. I don't remember, I can't even vaguely have a, a memory of it. And I'm thinking, well, I'm hungry. I just had this, this flashback memory, don't drink the water, don't eat the food. Like, what, what am I supposed to do? 
can I use the toilet roll? Can I? Am I able to do a wee wee? Uh, can I? Can I breathe in the air? And, uh, I mean, there's millions of people here that are eating the food and drinking the water. They, they seem to be okay. In fact, you could say they're looking a lot more healthier than the pale English people that I've just left. Anyway, I bought a can of Coke and a Mars bar. I thought, well, it's, that's pretty much fairly safe. And I think I had a bottle of water or something like that. And... I, yeah, I got, when I got the ticket, the, the, the uh, plane ticket, and uh, I wanted to get it online, but the internet didn't exist then, so I had to go into the, the, I think it was Thomas Cook, actually, they're not around anymore, but the I bought the ticket and they said you need to have because it was a re, was it a return yeah I think it was a return I think they've only allowed me to have a return uh, which was like two weeks from that date so I don't know I think so or it might have been an open return and they said but you need to stay at this hotel you need to have, they wouldn't sell it to me unless I had a, somewhere to stay. So I said, oh, okay. And I got a taxi from outside. Oh, it's beautiful weather. It's oh, beautiful. Uh, probably the nicest. Um, I don't know why I've not gone back. I should I should be living there or something. But it was something beautiful because I mean it wasn't cold where I was living because it was probably April May possibly about May time. Yeah, something like that. Maybe it was March, but it was definitely you know fairly nice weather. But it's when I got outside of the airport. Ah, oh, this. It was a heat, but it was a nice heat, you know. Oh, this is nice. Very relaxing. And then I, you know, sort of. I got people shouting stuff at me, which I heard the word taxi within the words that were being um, directed at me. So I got in a taxi, I showed them the address I was going to, thinking it would be near, and the taxi driver took me out into the mountains on a journey that lasted a, a good hour. And I kept saying, where are you going? And I couldn't understand. Well, I don't think we can understand each other. Funny enough, you could really speak good English when it came to the money. That's weird. I didn't understand that. When it came to actually the money he wanted, perfect English. And uh, But, you know, as far as directions go or anything like that, there was a definitely a, a language barrier. But with finances, you know, it, it could have been a... Definitely could be an accountant in England without any problems. It's like, and basically, I said, "Stop, stop the car." How much is it so far? Because I didn't have much money with me, and he said, um, I, "I said, stop the car." I said, "You did what about it?" I said, "Stop, stop the car." I didn't go to bad. I said, "Stop, stop." How much is the thing so far? 
Is it weird? Is it about, uh, it's about 25 pound. I said, what? It's about 25 pound. I said, why are you talking like that? Was that a, it's got a banana to order. What? Uh, 25 pound. <laughs> this is it's perfect English for the money, but the rest. And, um, I love it. This is Boris Johnson walking, and it's it's all these characters, a big red uh, like character from Sesame Street walking behind him. <laughs> now, I'd vote for him. Anyway, so I realised I'd just spent way too much money on a journey that I hadn't even got to where I was going. So I said, turn back, go back to the airport. So he basically ripped me off. And I didn't know what I was going to do then because I didn't have any, didn't have enough money to really do anything. So I, I went to the airport and I just said, look, it's a way of getting a, a return ticket. Can I like change my return ticket to earlier? And she says, I don't want to, um, look, the dad, the door, dingy bongy, what about la bull la bala, I said, what? She, I said, how much would it be? Because she looked like she was saying yes. £12.50 it would cost. So I said, um, okay, what time is it? I want to go for, <laughs> I can't speak Spanish. It'd be much better if I could speak Spanish. It'd be uh, make more sense. But anyway, she, you know, it's very much like she understood the the cost. That's what I was doing with that. And uh, so I got a return ticket forwarded to that day. So I, I think my flight back was about probably six o'clock in the afternoon something like that maybe five five or six and yeah I, I could have left early in the morning because I didn't get there till the afternoon so it might have been like 11 o'clock in the morning I got there so I got there about one o'clock in the afternoon and I left about five or six. So I basically, and then I came back to England, then I had to get back from Stansted or wherever it was in London, back to the town that I lived in. Couldn't get back all the way there because the bus, the trains had stopped. I had to get a taxi. And I had to phone ahead to my previous landlady because I'd actually moved out to ask her if I could move back in just for a couple of days till I find somewhere else to live. But what a kind of fuffle. And you know what the weird thing about it is? I'd left my job. No notice, I just decided to go. I had enough of everything. I just decided to move to, Fra to France, move to Spain, get a job in Spain, and that was it. I'd done some bar work the year before, uh, you know, the, that Christmas earlier in 88. So I knew I could do a little bit, I wasn't very good at it, but I could do something, you know, clean or whatever. And that's what I was going to do. But I went with no money. However, <laughs> the day after I got back, I had a month's wages went into my bank from my job that I just quit. So 
so at a month's wages, which is probably about £550. It's not, not a huge amount of money, but maybe it's 600 but it was... It was enough to have got me through quite, you know, a few weeks in Spain. You know, living cheaply until I found somewhere to live or to work or something. So if I'd have waited and got my ticket on that day and took the £500 with me or £600, my whole life might have been different. I might have gone and found some work doing something I might have met someone nice or someone horrible you know, it might, might have been a really different life I might be able to speak Spanish now but perfect English when it comes to the you know, money side of things so I might up, oh man Is this so? We don't know, do we? Just how how different things may have been, <laughs> and it doesn't matter because it doesn't make it a slightest bit of difference. But at the same time, it's it's kind of interesting. So that was my afternoon in Spain. Very expensive little uh, trip. I got to see a few of the sights, you know, in a taxi. But you know, I should. I think maybe in reflection, I should have just said, "Take me to the beach," or I should have just, just walked. Just you know, I was in Malaga. I think there's a beach in Malaga, I think. So we just walked to the beach and figured it out. But I didn't know how to I didn't know how to figure it out. I didn't know what there was to figure out. I mean I might have been able to have drawn the money out in Spain that was in my bank. I don't know. I don't know if I was able to do it back then. So yeah, I can't imagine as many people have left England to go and live in Spain and come back the same day. I mean, that's what I was doing. I was going there to live there. I wasn't going. I wasn't going for a holiday. I was going to get a job and have the time of my life I just wanted to be young never got to experience being young like being a young adult going out nightclubbing and having just a wild a wild time having lots of fun and stuff never got to do that um, so I kind of wanted to I thought that might be an opportunity but it didn't quite work that way so what I'm going to do in my 50s, I'm going to be a handful. I am going to be running around wild. I'm going to take driving lessons and get a sports car and rev my engine and I don't know what wear a hat I'm thinking of growing my hair long I've now got my hair wild it's sticking up, it's everywhere it's not my hair's not everywhere, it's not in the fridge but what I'm saying is it's, it's like really you know um, not Willy Wonka um, Back to the Future Back to the Future the professor 
my hair's a bit like that except it's not grey and it's not as long but it will be I think I'm just going to let myself go completely or let just myself just let myself go physically so my hair's really long and curly so I want to see what it looks like I'm going to let my beard go really long and curly and yeah that's what I want to do I think that's what I'm going to do yeah mind you this newsreader who's doing the, the the election night thing he's got the perfect hair Hugh Edwards I think his name is Hugh Edwards check out Hugh Edwards Head Edwards H-U W I think Edwards E-D-W-A-R-D-S perfect hair there is no better hair it's perfect it is like if I could have hair like that I would I can't my hair doesn't go like that but it's perfect hair absolutely he's got the best some of the best hairs cuts I've seen it might be stuck on it might not it might be a wig that would explain why he never does outside broadcasts and people don't like working with him in the summer because he refuses to have a fan blowing anyway I'm going to go thank you for listening remember to be kind to yourself because you deserve to be happy take care of yourselves and I'll speak to you tomorrow lots of love